Welcome to JSA TV Live, coming to you today from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress in Monaco, beautiful Monaco. I'm Barb Mitchell from JSA, and joining me today is Giuliano Di Viva, Di Antonio, <laughs> we practiced that, <laughs> thank you, CEO of Atlas Edge, and uh, Dan, Thomas, Dan Thomas, Senior Vice President of Sales. Yeah, thank you. We spoke a couple years ago, almost a couple years ago, um, when you were just getting started, right? And, and now the time has flown and you've done so much. New markets, expansions, partnerships, acquisitions, tell us everything. Yes, uh, well, the company has been in existence for uh, uh, almost 20 months. Uh, yeah. It's a joint venture between Digital Bridge and, and Liberty Global, so two giants of the digital infrastructure arena. And uh, yes, we've done quite a lot. We, uh, we've grown through uh, acquisitions. Uh, we are now present in uh, 12 countries and 21 metros. Uh, recently, we acquired a company in Germany, Data Center One, that was a leader in, in edge data centers in Germany. So uh, mm -hmm. we have a very, very solid platform there. And the plan is to continue to grow and, and to continue to expand. Uh, and everything that we do, especially in, in, in an area like Edge, that is, uh, tends to be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, it's a term that is used very, very uh, widely to mean different things. Yeah. Uh, we let our customers define what the Edge is. We really go where our customers uh, uh, indicate the Edge opportunities are. And that's why Dan plays uh, such a critical role in the company, because uh, he, he knows everything about our customers. So. Yeah. What do you want to well, and, share? And I guess through that, in terms of Giuliano talking about the, the acquisitions and the number of markets, that's also, mm -hmm. uh, as part of that, we've picked up uh, over 700 customers across Europe. So this wow. is a huge mix in terms of our enterprise base. We have other platform companies and then networks. And this is also continuing to grow, and it's at the heart of everything we do. Yeah, I mean, you're moving quickly. <laughs> wow, it's 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 always exciting, you know, when we, when we talked, you know, at the beginning of your journey. I mean, obviously, your journey's not finished, but you've already accomplished so much. Tell us, I know that you've recently announced some new partnerships. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, so we, we, um, we have a, an approach in terms of building ecosystems in all of these markets, right? So the, mm -hmm. the value to us and our customers is enabling them to connect in the sites. And actually the, the uh, core to that is some of the partnerships that we announced over the last few months, which are, uh, companies that allow that and foster the interconnection that happens uh, and it allows our enterprise base to get access to cloud it's providing access to network providers that get you across the different regions so this is really fundamental to what we're trying to build and actually these partnerships are the foundation as we start to go into new markets where we can continue to build on those that actually yeah. they start to sit in every single location that we operate in yeah it just ex expands the tentacles further, right? As you, it does, right? Yeah. It's, it's key to us as a company because we're really fostering that ecosystem in terms of number of companies that sit in the site. And ultimately, that's the value to them in having mm -hmm. companies like Megaport and Console Connect and Packet Fabric. Right. These, these are really at the heart of the ecosystem in terms of helping that customer base grow. Yeah, amazing. Um, and so Atlas Edge, Edge is in the name. I think it, it's, it's, you know, it's a hint that maybe that's important uh, to you. I believe you were on a panel yesterday uh, yeah. speaking on this topic. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, well, we chose the name very carefully. Of course, uh, right. it's all about Edge. So Edge had to be in the name. Yeah. And then we picked Atlas because it's really about putting dots on a map, on an Atlas. Right. So Atlas has sounded like the, the right like combination. It. And uh, uh, as I said, it's a very overloaded term. Everybody's talking about the Edge. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, Edge has been around for forever in the sense that the need to compute uh, data, uh, process data at the edge has been there uh, for, for a very long time. But what is changing uh, is the applications that are using that. They require more and more data and more and more bandwidth to, to move the data around. So that's why we're seeing that more and more dots are being placed on that map. Yeah. And we, we look at the market in, in terms of Horizon. Uh, Horizon 1 is where Edge is today, uh, which here in Europe is, uh, is roughly 40 locations where, you know, our customers are putting their edge deployment. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I say our customers, I mean enterprises, I mean uh, the hyperscalers. Uh, they have a specific definition of what edge means, which is the edge of their network. And today, that edge of their network is roughly 40, 40 cities, 40 metros across Europe, roughly the same number in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we see the next horizon, which we refer to as Horizon 2, which is going to be a much more regional footprint. Uh, we're talking about maybe in a, in a country like the UK or, or Germany, probably... 10, 12 markets, 
uh, while today it's more concentrated, for instance, in the UK around London and Manchester, in the future mm -hmm. it's going to be many more cities. And then there's also uh, what we call the future of edge, which is Horizon 3, where we're really starting to see uh, uh, computational capacity required very, very close to the end users. We refer to those uh, locations as proximity hubs. And we're looking at use cases that will require that more and more in the future. And that's uh, our next wave of innovation. So we are looking at the market in terms of phases, waves yeah. of demand, and working very closely with our customers to really understand where that demand lands and right. what are the use cases that drive it. Yeah, amazing. It's, I'd love to hear things laid out so clearly. You obviously have a plan and you're, you're tackling it uh, strategically, right? And, and then in partnership with your customers, your partners. Well, yeah, I go ahead. Maybe to add on what Juliana said, I think this is not theoretical, right? As Juliana said, this is, this is in close collaboration with our customers. They're yeah. driving the demand in terms of as we go to these markets, yeah. it's driven by actual use cases. And, and there's a difference as you look at the horizons, as Juliana mentioned, there's demand that we serve today that actually drives some of these core markets across Europe. Mm -hmm. But we're also engaged in understanding future use cases, which actually start to feed into that third horizon as we look at a far more distributed platform that we build across Europe. Right. And I can imagine that when you're speaking with your customers and partners, another big topic, you know, other than edge that comes up a lot is sustainability and the importance of that to our whole industry. Uh, we think about that a lot. You know, we're, we talk about greener data, as, as you know, but, you know, I'd be really interested to hear Atlas Edge's approach to sustainability. Yeah. So first of all, it's absolutely critical because uh, the future of our industry depends on our ability to be more sustainable. Right. Uh, and if you think our industry hasn't done a very good job at, at really, from a PR standpoint, are making the case for uh, a digital economy. Mm -hmm. uh, I look back at COVID and uh, if I think about the fact that thanks to digital infrastructure, we were able to keep the society running and operating and working. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, if you compare even in terms of emission and pollution during those times, the pollution decreased a lot. So it's clear that a digital society, yeah, clearly we don't want to be in that extreme situation. <laughs> again, <laughs> yeah. again, no, no one does. But it's, it's an example that a digital society is actually more sustainable than a more traditional way of doing business. Yet we came out of COVID with this you know, bad guy uh, a reputation for uh, mm. not being environmentally friendly. So we, we, something went wrong in our ability to communicate yeah, as an industry. Yep. Uh, the fact that actually a digital society is more sustainable mm -hmm. and actually is, is a better thing for, for, for the yep. planet. But you know, that's, a, that's at the macro level. Uh, in a, on a more tactical basis, we... Um, we clearly you know we're going to play our part. We're going to contribute to uh, the reduction in emission. We're going to reduce our PUEs in our data centers, and we're going to do more than that. We're going to we're going to invest in areas like uh, heat reuse, being able to uh, basically uh, recycle the heat that gets generated in the data center, so it doesn't get you know uh, it doesn't go in the in the environment, but it's used to, to for it's put to good use, like uh, heating uh, residential areas or re heating commercial areas. Yeah. So clearly, we want to we want to we want to play our part. We're going to focus a lot on uh, on the water water conservation because that's another another big yeah. part of, of, of the strategy so we're going to play our part to make sure that uh, uh, that you know, the overall data center industry becomes more sustainable but edge in itself is going to be a big step forward for for the industry because when you have a much more distributed footprint uh, it actually contributes to a more sustainable solution I mentioned heat reuse heat reuse can only be uh, achieved within a certain radius or where the heat is generated. And so if you have a much more distributed footprint, there's a much wider area that can uh, benefit from that heat reuse. Mm -hmm. If you concentrate all the capacity in, in four cities around Europe or five cities in North America, you're not going to have the full benefits of heat reuse. With the edge, with a more distributed footprint, you, you can do that. So we are contributing in, in multiple ways. Yeah, amazing. And Dan, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to, to add to that or just sort of final words on... Well, I, I guess um, only to add on what Juliana has mentioned, right? There's innovation that we're pushing as a company, but also, and, and I continue to wave the customer flag in this respect, but it's also um, highly aligned in terms of our customer expectations as they look at going into these sites, right? right? So it comes from both sides of right. the industry, yeah. which I think actually is mutually that's where everyone is driving towards so it fits mm -hmm. it fits completely in line in terms of the innovation that Giuliano talked about yeah. as we launch new sites in regions it's closely aligned to what customers also expect 
Right. Well, thank you so much for our viewers. Some I know that you know the week's only what half over, so there's lots of time. Yeah, a lot of yes. yeah, Lots yeah, of yeah. lots of time for you. Yeah, yeah. You, I know you already have a lot of people you'll be connecting with uh, for our viewers who maybe want to find you while they're here or will miss you this week and want to connect with you after. How can they find you? A uh, few different places. So uh, connect with us through LinkedIn, right? We, yeah. we come through the website. There's a team there that you can talk to. So there's multiple different routes for you to connect with the company, but just give us a call. Great. Yeah, perfect. And thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. Good it, yeah, good to see you as well. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV Live, coming to you today from Data Cloud Global Congress here in Monaco. Until next time. <laughs>